Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Stephen King list. Today we are doing a seasonal list. Um, I would probably do something like this for Christmas also. If you guys want to see that, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. But I am going to be giving you my top five reads for the Halloween season, um, or for fall in general, from Stephen King. So books that anytime, they might not even, they might not even occur during Halloween or during that time frame, but these are the books that give me that autumnal feel, the books that make me feel like it's like it's autumn, that the leaves are changing, I can smell the wood smoke in the air, that kind of thing. Um, so if you have any, I want to say this before, I usually say this at the end of the video, but if you have any uh, Stephen King reads that you think really speak to the tone of autumn or Halloween. Let me know down there in the comments. Share your um, share your list with everybody. Um, and please, if you're watching this, check out everybody's list down below. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get right into it. And I'm going to start with something that I put on the bottom. I shouldn't have put it on the bottom. But the topic of this week's Thursday Theorist. Cycle of the Werewolf. And yes, there is the October one. I'm going to go ahead and skip to it. But, uh, yeah, there's the trick-or-treat scene. But the uh, this one just feels, and yes, it takes place over an entire year, but this one, probably because it's a werewolf story, this one feels especially like um, an, an autumn story. I guess it's mainly because of the werewolf thing, and also it is supremely short. It is super short. It's only 120, yeah, 127 pages, and at least 12 of those pages are pictures. So uh, it really lends to a, a speed, something speedy, kind of like the Halloween tree from Ray Bradbury. It's something you can read, you know, in a month's time, or something that you can read on Halloween. Sit down and you know read the entire thing that day. All right, next up on my list, I have. Let, I, I didn't do a very good job of organizing these. I apologize. Um, so next up, I want to do this one, uh, and this one, <laughs> this one's going to be odd just because of my personal story for it. But Cujo. So I was bit by a dog when I was nine years old, and when I was bit, it was fall, and I remember there was leaves all over. I have a very clear visual image of that time, of course, because I was terrified. I thought I was going to die. Um, but so anytime, I, I don't know what season the book takes place in, but um, I think it's summer, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's the middle of summer because, uh, spoilers, uh, they get trapped in the car and the boy, spoilers, spoilers for Cujo, the boy, you know, dies from heat, uh, from heat stroke, uh, or whatever, exposure, whatever you want to call it. But this one feels to me like it needs to be a Halloween story, like it's an autumn story, even if it is, and I live in the South and I grew up in California, so where the places that I've lived and I grew up are notoriously hot during the fall. So there's one. Uh, next up, let's do this one. From different seasons, we will call the body. Uh, not we will call, we will note the body. Um, and I believe it is Fall from Innocence. Uh, yeah, it is Fall from Innocence. So it's the fall story. So right on season, uh, Stephen King's The Body, which of course is the was adapted into the, the famous movie Stand By Me. But there's also, once again, there's that sense while you're reading The Body that it happens, that it occurs during the fall, during a cooler time that isn't quite, you know, cold enough to be winter, that things are changing. Even the, the theme of, you know, coming of age is a change, is a seasonal change. And for me especially, nothing denotes the change of a season more than fall. Everything's dying so that everything can restart in the spring. So for me, fall really speaks to, to the coming of age going from a child to an adult. My number two book for this season, for the Halloween season, is Thinner. Especially because of the time of year um, with uh, harvest time, with carnivals and fairs and all that stuff going on. Uh, and some of this book has to do with Gypsy, the, the Gypsy Curse, that kind of deal. And that really speaks to this time of, this time of year. Uh, another thing that speaks to it is you have the uh, sort of like the costume feel because you have what happens to the people who are cursed 
in the book, not just the main character, but the other people that are involved with, you know, covering up the tragedy. So, um, and that speaks to costumes, that speaks to change also, so that fits in for me. Last, but certainly not least, one of my favorite Stephen King books of all time, and many people that read Stephen, want to read Stephen King around this time, this is the book that they fall back on when they, when they want to read a Stephen King book for Halloween, and that is Pet Cemetery. Yeah, this book's great. Um, it spent with Scott all all of the tropes. You got you know the the undead. You got cemetery scenes. He's got the creepy woods. You got uh, something out in the woods that whether it be you know whatever it might be out there. If you haven't read the book, I don't want to spoil it for you. But there's something out in the woods, and all that speaks to the Halloween season and just the fun spooky you know, the spookiness that comes along with that, that is inherent with the Halloween season. So again, if you have any of your own books that you like to read that are Stephen King related, I'm going to be doing another non-Stephen King list, so save those lists for that video. But if you have any Stephen King, what do you, which, which Stephen King books do you like to read during the Halloween season? Let me know down there in the comments below. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Stephen King list. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!